First they came for the Confederate statues, and many of us agreed. They had good reason to come down. But then they went for the American presidents, and many of us said, wait a minute, what is this really about? And now they're wanting to go after baby Jesus. I'm not joking. That is actually the next statue or icon depictions that are being targeted are imagery of Jesus, the Mother Mary, and many of the the apostles as well. So let's go ahead and break this down. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. This is where you get a more logical left perspective of today's current events, politics, foreign policy. So let's go ahead and start here. Sean King, he is a Black Lives Matter activist. He's a writer for The Intercept. He's got a big following. A lot of people hear what he has to say. He tweeted this out. Yes, I think the statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down. They're a form of white supremacy, always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark. Tear them down. Yes, all murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and their white friends should also come down. They're a gross form, white supremacy, created as tools of oppression, racist propaganda. They should all come down. So um, that is the next target, it looks like. So with the Confederate statues, there was a lot of reasoning there. These statues were put up during the Jim Crow era to intimidate black people down in the South. That was obviously uh, a very, it, they were wrong. They were, they shouldn't be there. They weren't put up, they weren't put up during the Confederate era. They were put up during Jim Crow and segregation. And that, ha there was a lot of good reason there to say it's time to remove those statues. A lot of people fought back and said, yeah, but these Confederate generals are, there are icons, they're symbols of the South. It's just about, um, it's more about history. And, but, you know, there's still a lot of reason to say, you know, I can, I can see your point. Those statues need to go. But then people said, what's next, though? What's next? Are you going to start tearing down statues of American presidents? And people on the left said, no, that's not what we're doing. We're specifically taking down these Confederate generals, these that were slave-owning Confederates, that fought for slavery, and these statues were put up in the Jim Crow era anyway just to intimidate people. So no, that is not where we're after. We're just taking these down. But then they did. But then they went after those American presidents. And now we've seen the toppling of George Washington, where they wrapped his head in American flag and lit it on fire and toppled the statue. Thomas Jefferson, Ulysses S. Grant, uh, the guy who actually defeated the Confederates and freed the slaves. They toppled that statue, too. So th when they started going after American presidents, people said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought you said we were, we were just taking down these Confederate statues because they were symbols of racism in the South. These statues were put up, you know, we're going through the whole thing again, right? And they said, yeah, but we're extending this out and we're extending it now to slave owners. Anybody who was a slave owner, we're going to tear their statue down because we shouldn't idolize slave owners. Now, Granted, the founding fathers and many of our first presidents and even current presidents are definitely not perfect people. And I could understand, um, you know, unless the, I, I, yeah, well, actually, I can't really understand. No one is, perf is perfect at all. So unless you're going to put up statues of, fict <laughs> so this is where it gets interesting, right? Because I was just about to say, unless you're going to put up statues or figures of like a, a godlike person who has no faults or flaws and maybe has never committed a sin in their life, then I guess you can't have a statue of anybody. But it turns out they don't want a statue of that guy either. So now they're really genuinely after baby Jesus. Now, their beef is that the depictions of Jesus are that he's white and that the depictions of the Mother Mary are that she's white and that the depictions of the apostles are that they're white. And we all know that Jesus was in the Middle East. And the entire stories from the Bible take place in the Middle East where people are not typically white. Not really sure what they look like actually 2,000 years ago. They could have been darker. They could have been lighter. They could have been the same. It's hard to say because there's been a lot of history and mixing around and conquering and moving of people throughout history. So it's really kind of hard to say actually what anybody looked like 2,000 years ago. But needless to say, the depictions currently of Jesus and Mary and the apostles are based on European faces and European colors. So that's his big beef with Jesus, is not the fact that he was a slave owner because he wasn't, not because he was an imperfect person because, you know, according to 
the texts and Bible and scripts, he was perfect. So instead, it's the whiteness. It's specifically the whiteness. So this leads us to um, a couple of questions. The first question is, is he serious? Is he really going to go after statues of baby Jesus, the Mother Mary, and stained glass windows on churches and actually start vandalizing and desecrating these, these statues, figures, monuments, churches? Is he really serious? And the second question is, are they then going to go after just whiteness? Because first it was confederateness and slay and defense of slavery. Then it was, well, no, if you were a slave owner, you got to come down. And now the thing that they're picking on with Jesus, because he was neither a slave owner nor an imperfect person, is the fact that he was white. So are they then going to go after any depictions of white people? And any, idolize, any idolizing of whites, should all of those come down as well? The first question, let's go ahead and tackle this because it's a really important one. Are they serious? Are they really going to go after these statues, monuments, stained glass, and whatnot? Here's where it gets kind of scary. Actually, in France, this has been a real problem. Here's a Newsweek article for you. This is from March of last year. Catholic churches are being desecrated across France, and officials don't know why. France has seen a spate of attacks against Catholic churches since the start of the year. Vandalism that has included arson and desecration. Vandals have smashed statues, knocked down tabernacles, scattered or destroyed the Eucharist, and torn down crosses, sparking fears of a rise in the anti-Catholic sentiment in the country. Last Sunday, the historic church of Saint-Sulpice in Paris was set on fire just after midday mass on Sunday, Le Parisian reported. Although no one was injured, police are still investigating the attack, which firefighters have con confidently attributed to arson. So uh, Saint-Sulpice was set on fire. A few weeks later, you will remember that Notre Dame was on fire. The French authorities quickly came out and said that there was no arson uh, involved in Notre Dame. I don't even know if they actually know. Um, let me see if they, do they even know what the cause of the Notre Dame fire was? I know they're very, very quick. I mean, the fire, the, the cathedral was on fire and they quickly came out and said, it's not arson. It's not arson, which was kind of almost suspect in and of itself. But um, I don't think that they so I don't think that they, they, they said it was likely an electrical fault, maybe a cigarette. So they don't really know. Um, but that's interesting. The reason why that's interesting is because a lot of churches were set on fire, vandalized. In fact, a thousand. I, I believe it's the number of churches. Here's a website. Now, this is christianophobe.fr. Uh, so this is a, a website dedicated to... Um, I don't know, how do you even say it? Christian, I know you say like Islamophobe, so would it be Christianphobe, Christianophobe? Is that what there's, Christianophobe? So that's what this website is dedicated to. And they actually track all of the attacks on Christians, churches that are happening mostly in France, because this is a French website. They also do gather some data from other areas really all around the world. But predominantly, they're tracking everything that's going on in France. Now, they have tracked thousands of cases that have happened in France and they track the um, I did check and they're they are accurate so even though they are a website dedicated to tracking Christianophobe they are accurate and they tell you what type of crime it was so they've got criminal you know they've got fire so arson they have violence um, so graffiti vandalism that sort of thing and they've been able to track since 2016 uh, I'm not sure what the exact now. It's definitely over a thousand cases of arson and vandalism against Catholic churches in France. So this is a trend that has been going on over there. This attack on Christianity, um, an attack on now. There's a lot of theories as to why that's going on in France. Who's committing the crimes? They're not sure. Some of them are saying, well, it's this anti. Um, well, a lot of people are saying that it's it's the Islamic youth and that they're rising up and they're attacking Christians. A lot of people say, well, no, it's more of an attack on the 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 systems of oppression or the you know kind of like what Sean King's talking about the racism or the oppression that religion uh, depicts or that religion 
you know, kind of represents on people. And so that is why people are destroying all of these churches and monuments. But that is to show that it is kind of scary that um, when Sean King comes out and says, yeah, I think all of these statues need to go. And when we look around and we see this map of how many how many actual acts of vandalism and arson there have been against Catholic churches in France, it does seem really scary to think that that could be what's next when you've got somebody advocating for this. Now, here's the thing. I am not against statues coming down if that's what the people in the community want. So if you're in a neighborhood and you've got a statue and maybe the statue is of George Washington or the statue is of Ulysses S. Grant or whoever it might be, and people in the community start to say, you know what, that statue really doesn't belong there. Don't you think we could have something that's a bit better that doesn't represent you know, a slave owner that's X, Y, Z? And if the community then debates that and says through time, because it's hard to change people's minds. So you're not going to get them on the first try. You're going to have to work people a bit. That's how activism works. You have to work people a bit. Uh, luckily for us, actually, things sometimes don't change as fast as you'd want them to change because if things move too fast, we might end up in kind of a scary place. We've seen cultures move really, really quickly in one direction, kind of like Nazi Germany, and it doesn't result very well all the time. So sometimes it's good to have people that are a bit more reserved push back and say, wait a minute, I don't know about all this change and all this stuff you want to do. It's that balance, that yin and the yang. So when people in a community say, hey, listen, I'm not sure about the statue, others can say, you know what, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But some people say, you know what, I think you're right. Slowly, you start to change the minds of the people in your community. You work up a petition, you get to your city council and you say, we have decided as a community, we want this statue removed. Now, if it gets to a point where your local leaders are not listening, the majority of the people have decided they do not want that statue in their community, then I think... There could be a reason to justify sort of the community coming together and saying, fine, if our local leaders aren't going to listen to our voices and we have decided on this using our democracy, and if they're still not going to listen to us, then we're taking this sucker down ourselves. I can understand that. What I can't understand are small groups of people that decide we are morally superior. We know what is best. We're going to take down these statues. And we don't give a damn what you think. We're not doing this through democracy or any democratic means. We don't care about your thoughts because your thoughts are wrong. That in and of itself is a really bad way of thinking. Really problematic. Leads to dark places. So I'm fine with the removal of these statues. I'm fine with making change. I'm fine with people in churches saying, you know what, maybe we should make Jesus look a little bit more Middle Eastern. You know, maybe we should make Mother Mary have brown hair. Maybe we should have black Jesus and a black Mother Mary or an Asian Jesus and an Asian Mother Mary. I'm fine with churches making those decisions for themselves inside of those communities because they want to make that change. But when people want to go and violently do it by force and through vandalism, that's where it gets really scary. Not saying in these tweets that Sean King is calling for that, but here he is tweeting, yes, I think we should go after statues of white Jesus and white Mary and his white friends too. And we're in the middle of a time when people are violently taking down these statues without public support or consent or democracy or consensus of any kind except just the mob that surrounds the statue at that moment, then it does become very scary to think that perhaps what he's actually doing is inciting vandalism against churches, against private property, against people who believe in their religion. And that also fundamentally is so not liberal. Now we're going to attack Christians and say, we don't give a damn about your racist beliefs, your Christian religion went around, caused, you know, crusades and conquering and death and enslavement and all sorts of atrocities and your religion should go. I'm starting to hear that narrative a lot from a lot of liberals, which is very anti accept everybody and be open and accepting to all different walks of life, people of different colors, sexes, genders, and religions. But religion does seem to be kind of getting cut out of that and... This is kind of an alarming tweet showing that trend. So something to pay attention to because, you know, um, we can sit here and say we don't think it's going to happen. But I also didn't think really George Washington would come down. I really thought that, no, come on, it's going to stop with the Confederate statues. It's fine. 
And a lot of us were wrong on that. So let's just hope and pray. Those of you that are religious, I'm, I'm not anymore. But those of you who are, hope and pray that your churches remain safe and that you are allowed to practice your religion with uh, in peace and freedom, the freedom that this country is supposed to guarantee to protect. Thank you so much for watching this channel. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, best of luck to you guys. <laughs> best of luck during these crazy times. Thanks for watching.